since you brought up techniques, there's one technique that I think uh, many candidates don't even know that they need to use until this very podcast episode, which is the so what and the next steps. Yeah. And now that they know that they need to use it, and I've told I've told them that they need to diagnose themselves and see if they can do that, and that they can't, then they need a way to practice. So I want to bring this up to them so that we won't leave them hanging in that in that sense. So how do you practice the so what? Uh, see if you agree with me. Yeah. Basically, will, will you spill the secrets, Julio? Yeah, I'll spill the secrets. All right, I'll spill the secrets. If All right, guys, I'll, I'll look into your eyes again. <laughs> no one has ever taught you this. <laughs> yeah, because no, we invented it. Everyone says, "Oh, you have to have a so what at the end of your analysis." No one says how. Yeah, Julio's gonna spill the secrets right now. Spilling the secrets uh, on the risk of no one ever buying our courses ever again because <laughs> all the secrets are out there. Yeah. Uh, the best way to practice this is every time you do an analysis or if you want more frequent, you can even get numbers without uh, the questions before just getting a number in a business in a case. But uh, it's simpler. Every time you do an analysis, you get to the final number before doing anything else. Take your framework out, the one you used in the beginning of the case to solve the actual case question, plug the number in there and ask yourself, where does this point the final answer to? Yeah. So does this mean we're closer to a yes or to a no or to this option or to that option? Where does it point the final answer to? And phrasing that in a concise way is the interpretation to the number. Yeah. And then yeah. next, you look at the framework again and you cross whatever it is, that arm that gave you that conclusion, and you ask yourself, what should I do next based on this? Yeah. Sometimes it's just a random number in the framework and you should do the same thing, which is starting from the beginning. Sometimes it changes the entire hypothesis, so now you need to dive into that. Sometimes it gives the answer to the case and you need to do something else afterwards. But the framework that you've built as a path to solve the case should also give you the next step based on that number. Yeah, and the other thing that I think helps a lot mm -hmm. is because a lot of people, let's say they do an analysis and they find the answer is 37. Yeah. And then they're like, oh, that seems low. <laughs> I think because of that, we need to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, it it kind of feels like you, you don't know if it's low or not. So the thing that helps a lot uh, understanding and interpreting a result is comparing the number to other relevant numbers. So right. This number is 37, and I'm being abstract on purpose here. Uh, what is our competitor's number? Mm -hmm. What is What was your no our number a quarter ago? Yeah. What was our, uh, our target yeah. for this number? Mm -hmm. And if you do this and show your interviewer you're doing this comparison, then you can go back to your framework and say, oh, this number is high. Yeah which means this and we should do this. And you, you're, you're not pulling out of your, uh, I don't know if you can curse on YouTube, but. Uh, um, I don't think so. Yeah, okay. Uh, you can pull it out of your. Uh, of your something. Uh, of your something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can actually have a basis for that. Yeah, I think that's a good point. 